Hello, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about ways to gain experience without having experience, if that makes any sense. So stay till the end and it will all make sense. So if you guys are new to the channel, please like, subscribe and share. And like always, I really appreciate all the support. So I always get the question, I get it a lot. How do I get experience without having any experience? Meaning I haven't had a cybersecurity job, but I want to get into the field. So what do I need? You need experience, right? So I want to go, I have about 10 or 11 written down. So I want to go through each and every one of those. So number one on the list is volunteering, right? You can volunteer your time. Maybe you can go on LinkedIn, say, hey, I'm looking to intern, volunteer my time. And you can go from there, right? You can contact some people. Maybe you can shoot them some emails or some messages. Just say, you know, I want to get some experience in the field. I'm looking to shadow, intern, volunteer, and etc. So that's number one on my list, right? And number two here is network, networking, right? So networking, meaning you can just go to conferences. You can go to different uh, meetups. You can do like capture the flags. You could do a whole bunch of things like that, but capture flag, obviously it's, it's one in itself, but then you can just network with people, right? That's, that's the most important thing. Maybe you can meet up with business owners, meetups, so you can go download the meetup application and just meet up with folks and just network, get to know people, right? And so the next one here is work placements. So you can learn more about this doing like internships as well, jobs that let you see different sides of what it's about in the cybersecurity field, right? Hopefully that makes sense. So the next one I have on the, the list here is CTF events, meaning you can go to sign up with CTFs, learn about Try Hack Me, Hack the Box, you can do Vuln Hub, you know, Pico CTF. There's so many CTF events that you can check out. Just Google. CTF events that are taking place, or maybe shoot something on LinkedIn, Discord servers, but we'll get to the Discord services shortly. And just say, hey, is everyone, anyone know any CTF events? And just, you know, going back to the networking in the community, and you'll get to know those, those things, okay? And number five here is a, attend hackathons sort of like C CTFs, right? Hackathons are competition events where people can improve their cybersecurity skills while working in groups, right? So this obviously can help people get sponsors. You can see sponsors out there, employers. There's a whole bunch of benefits from doing that, you know? So the next one here, and this is all member, methods to acquire experience in cybersecurity, right? So the next one here is just continuous learning right? Setting up your own home lab. You can do try hack me's. You could do hack the boxes. You can do real world labs that you can set up. Maybe you can have someone else set up. This is something I really enjoy. Say, for example, you come to me and say, Pat, I want to learn something. I'll do something. I do have a network over there that I have for sort of real world CTF -y things. And I'm no CTF expert to create them. I just create my own ghetto rigged versions. And I'll say, hey, Mr. Friend, I'll say, here, here's an IP address, or I'll do OpenVPN, which I set up a video on how to set that up. I'll create a user for that user and have them VPN into my network and then have them go to town at the server and practice and hack away. And then I'll just disable that and, you know, re-image that machine. But anyhow, that's another thing, right? To get that real world fun experience, right? So the next one is bug bounties. Bug bounties are super, super cool. And I've participated in, in a few. I don't really talk too much about it because it's still not an area of my expertise. I'm no Gnomesec, John Hammond, or any of those folks. So I just keep to myself and do my little things on the side with a, you know, with a group of friends. So bug bounties obviously provide a fantastic, fantastic opportunity to gain the practical cybersecurity experience while offering a potential of financial rewards. So if you submit a bug, you get a reward. And I never gained any any rewards, <laughs> just putting that out there. And um, 
So another one here is open source projects. You know, you can contribute open source things. Like there's so many open source things on GitHub, right? Cool different tools. I've used plenty of some amazing tools out there from amazing smart people, right? So maybe you can be the next smart person and put your tool on GitHub on the internet and I can utilize it and try it out because I'm not smart enough to create my own. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But all jokes aside, it's cool to do that as well. I have a few little projects I worked on. I just don't I just don't post it up on GitHub because, you know, I'm just reinvented a wheel and just checking out my own ways of doing things. But the next one on the list here is set up a home lab. I've said this and I say it and I'll continue to say this. There's so many benefits of setting home labs up. So setting up your own lab is handy because if you have the lack of experience in cybersecurity or IT in general, this gives you this gives you the opportunity to successfully set up an environment of your own. So you're going to learn systems, you're going to learn networking, like route switch, you're going to learn some of that when you're setting up your own stuff because you need communication between different machines, different operating systems, you're probably going to install like Windows Server, a client like a Windows 10, maybe even Kali Linux, your attacking machine if you're looking to get into cybersecurity, or maybe you're looking to do defensive stuff like use Waza and some SIM tools like OpenVos you can use for vulnerability management, then you can use Waza as a SIM, or you can use SimMonster, so many different cool to, uh, tools out there, right? And the last one I have on this list is Discord, right? So Discord, you can get into so many, right? Hack the box, try hack means my own uh, TCM security. There's so many cool discords out there that you can just dedicate the time to mentor people or get them to mentor you with, you know, a whole bunch of different people out there. That, that's all I need to say. Like, just use discord. Obviously, don't be a dick. <laughs> that's number one, right? There's There's a lot of trolls out there. Uh, a couple learn their lesson, but that's besides the point. And that's all I have here. And uh, and the last thing I have on this list is just, it, it, it's continuously learning. I said it already, but just never stop learning. Dedicate some time, maybe an hour a day to learn a new technique, learn a new product, you know, learn something new because if you're complacent or stagnant in this field, you're gonna be left behind. And I've seen it a lot, not only in this field, in system administration. When I worked as a sysadmin, a system engineer, people didn't look so much to the future in the cloud. Everyone was so, you know, the old school cats. They were so like, you know, fixated on the in-house servers and their little Hyper-V environment or VMware environment. And then when everything started going Azure, GCP, AWS, they're so used to using in-house, you know, the technology grew and they didn't. So stay stay learning, stay consistent and you know, get some certifications if you need certifications. You know, obviously I'm a big believer in getting certifications and reinforce that learning, but that's up to you. I'll leave that up to your discretion. But thank you so much for checking my video out. If you have any questions or if I missed anything to gain experience, put it in the comments below and I'm open to hear new opportunities to learn how to get that experience. So thank you so much. And until next time, have a beautiful day.